and welcome back to the Common Connected Podcast. I'm your host, Janine Halloran, and today is the next in our series of Coping Skills for Adults, where I've been taking my solo episodes and talking about some different strategies that we as adults can use to cope with different feelings and emotions and challenging uh, things that are going on in our life. And today I wanted to focus on a particular strategy that comes out of the processing coping style, and it's perfectly timed because it's all about gratitude and in the US today it is Thanksgiving so a great opportunity for us to take a few minutes and focus on what we are grateful for so there is a lot of research that continues to come out around the practice of gratitude so there are studies that have looked at gratitude and the impact it can have and it really can have a benefit for your psychological well-being it can improve your relationships it can increase empathy and reduce toxic emotions and just in general is good for your well-being so that's why I really like to focus on it as a strategy for kids to use and for families to use and for adults to use for grown-ups to use Um, because it can make such a huge difference in terms of being able to find the good in the day so when you practice finding the good being able to pinpoint those things that have gone well for you it it's sort of like training your brain. So it's easier for your brain to find those positives. Um, The more you do it, the more you practice, the easier it becomes. Um, Actually, I remember even reading something about Oprah and her gratitude practice. And, you know, I love Oprah. And she talked about how she was doing it for a while and it was really helping her focus on the good things. But what happened was she fell away from her gratitude practice and she was finding that she was getting more irritated, more irritable, like just harder to find those good things. And then she realized she had gotten away from it because it happens. It happens to all of us where we try something and then maybe we fall away from it for a little bit. Um, And then she said, you know, once she got back on track with her gratitude practice, it made it easier for her to find the good things in her life. So how do we do this um, on a day-to-day basis? What do we do to make sure that we are looking and finding the good? So the way I try to do it is I actually just sometimes even say the things out loud that I am grateful for throughout the day. Sometimes I write it down so I can keep track of it. And there's a benefit to writing it down because then you can look back on it and see um, what are those things that you were grateful for. There's something about seeing a whole big list of things that you're grateful for. But sometimes I don't have a book with me, my journal with me, um, and I just want to, I'm thankful for it. So I want to actually take a mindful moment and pause and make a note of that out loud to myself, usually in my car, or if I'm in my kitchen and I'm noticing something, I'll say it out loud. So, um, and I think sometimes as adults, it's also hard for us to try and find the good. There's so many things that um, are challenging, so many things that are tough or stressful, that it makes it, um, I think, a little bit harder for us as adults to sort of focus on the good things. So the good news is if we focus on the good, then we can help our families focus on the good, our clients focus on the good, our students focus on the good. So as I was getting ready for this podcast, I decided to actually write down some of the things that I was grateful for and make a note of it so that I could share them with you. So um One of the first things that I'm grateful for is my new backyard. So we moved over the summer and we moved to a place that's a little bit um, less uh, less city like. And so there's a lot more trees. There's a lot of forest. Actually, we live right on um, some town forest throughout the day sometimes I will go by um, the kitchen window and I will see sometimes deer Um, I see chipmunks I see birds I see squirrels and I see um, the way that the light goes through the trees and shines on things and the way that the leaves fall recently just watching that whole series that's that whole series of events through just watching how nature unfolds um, is really amazing and it's such a soothing thing for me I love nature and that was part of the reason why I wanted to um, move to a place like this because it really is soothing for me so to be able to have that every day I'm so thankful for that I'm so thankful that I can look out and enjoy those views and get a moment to be mindful and pay attention to what's going on around me um, as opposed to being just really focused on getting the to-do list done 
As a person who also works online, I am really thankful for kind words from strangers because a lot of times there can be some negative words or some not so kind words all the time. So I'm always thankful when people reach out and say, this really helped me or I really enjoyed um, hearing you speak at this um conference or I really enjoyed uh, reading your book. It really helped my child. It really helped me. Um, So I love getting those words of encouragement. I actually have like a special folder in my inbox for all of those words of kindness and encouragement. That's how much it means to me. So when I'm having a bad day, I look at those and I feel better about um, how things are going. It helps me remember the good things, remember the positive impact that I've had to sort of negate all the negativity that could also happen when you just live online. It just happens. Um, So I'm thankful for kind words. I'm also thankful for friends. So having moved, I was a little bit nervous about um, friendships and making sure that not only my kids started developing some new friendships, but I started developing some new friendships. And I'm so thankful that we've found a couple of families that are just wonderful and great and accepting and kind and um, just so helpful. And it's been nice to connect with them. And I'm also thankful for my old friends. You know, I'm thankful that I have people in my life who are my greatest cheerleaders. I'm thankful for people who I know I can always count on and will help me no matter what. I can text at three in the morning and they will text me back. I appreciate that. Um, So I'm thankful for that. And I'm also thankful for pets. I'm thankful um, that pets can have such a positive impact in your life. They can have such a a, a positive impact on your emotional well-being. Um, And I have seen that with my own family, how much my own animals throughout uh, the years that we've had guinea pigs and even fish and a dog that has a positive impact on my kids and on my husband and on me. And I've also seen it with my other families, like how much the families that I, the families of the kids that I see, I see how much having a pet can be such a benefit to them, helping them soothe their anxiety, helping them de-stress after a really tough day. So I'm so thankful for pets in that Um, for that reason. And then the other thing I'm thankful for is audiobooks and podcasts. So sometimes at the end of a day when I've been looking at my computer all day long, I don't want to read a book. I don't, I can't really use my eyes. My eyes are too tired, but I still love taking in information and being able to have somebody tell me a story um, and use all these amazing voices and do all these cool things or just learning about different um, areas of the world or learning about different people's viewpoints or learning about a new mystery that's happening. I love that sort of stuff. So I'm so thankful for audiobooks and podcasts. And oh, and there's one other thing as I was uh, prepping for this podcast, uh, something else that came up was writing a thank you note to someone. So back on episode 70 of the Common Connected podcast, uh, I talk about using dominoes as a way to show the kindness ripple effect. Like if you are kind to somebody, then it can ripple out and other people are kind and then it leads to more kindness. And it was really cool. And when I was talking to just prepping for it, I got connected with Dr. Alan Chu, who is an an assistant professor of psychology out at the University of Wisconsin in Green Bay. He talks about the research of writing thank you notes to people that you are thankful for in your life and how research shows that if you write those thank you notes, then those people in turn will write thank you notes themselves to share the positive impact that somebody else has had on them. So it sort of creates this ripple effect of gratitude when you write a thank you note to somebody who really made an impact in your life. And then they will in turn also write thank you notes to those other people. And it just, it is a nice way to show your gratitude and to focus on those people who have really made a positive impact in your life. Those those people who are positive childhood experiences, positive experiences for you. Um, so it's really, it's really a neat um, activity to do. So I would encourage you to go ahead and write some thank you notes to people who really impacted you in a positive way. So for those of you who celebrate, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. 
If you enjoyed this podcast, please feel free to share it with your friends, family, and colleagues. And don't forget about yourself. Take a few minutes, have a little fun, and have an awesome day.